the north and two thirds uh, uh, up and one third down, and it intersects the sphere at exactly 19.47122064 latitude, which is exactly where I live. Actually, I live on the Big Island of Hawaii, and that is on one of those points. Mm -hmm. yeah. And. I was puzzled. How did that get in there? Did somebody listen to my thoughts? <laughs> but I realized that it, this graphic was the result of a paper that had been published by an American engineer that had been hired to survey the huge city, uh, ancient city of Teotihuacan near Mexico City. This is where there's the moon pyramid and the sun pyramid and the way of the dead and all this stuff. His name was Hugh Holliston Jr. And the paper was published by the American Health Society after 20 years of him putting, um, a, 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 a surveying all of the buildings there. Well, when Hugh Holliston Jr. started to survey the buildings at that ancient city, he found something very bizarre. He found that all the buildings there seems to, like the large buildings, the temples and such, seems to be in the exact appropriate place to describe all the orbits of our solar system. With the sun pyramid, the moon pyramid and everything. He found all the orbits including Pluto and Neptune. Now, Pluto and Neptune, I mean, Neptune, I think it was late 1800s, Pluto was discovered by us uh, early 1900s, 1920-something, uh, by the observatory in Arizona there, in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. So, how come these people, thousands of years ago, had these, these orbitals? Not only did they know these planets were there, but it had the appropriate placement to generate their orbits. Those are extremely difficult things to figure out, especially if you can't see it. <laughs> and so that blew his mind. And he started to like continue to investigate and he found that there was some incredible mathematical recurrence in all of the measurements that he was taking. And that recurrence, these mathematics that kept on creeping up were always the same. And, they, and he figured out that they were pointing out to the mathematics of a sphere and a tetrahedron embedded in it. And that's why he put that graphic in his paper, saying that if these people were trying to communicate something to us, they were trying to tell us about a sphere and a tetrahedron. He didn't notice, though, that even that city, right beside Mexico City, that ancient city, is exactly at 19.47 latitude on the earth as well. So not only does it have the mathematic of a tetrahedron in a sphere in all of its layouts, but as well it is placed on the earth exactly where a tetrahedron would intersect a sphere. What's the, what's the third point? Well this is this is a grand circle you know, all around the all around the earth. So depending on where you put this point, these other points will move, right? But if you put this point at uh, the Big Island of Hawaii, then this uh, then um, uh, Mexico City is somewhere in the middle here, in between these two points. This one is near the coast of Africa, I believe, and then this one is India the Daikini temples in India. 
And so I was, you know, I was amazed that this engineer had come up with it. And I was confirming, you know, that like, imagine that there is a fundamental structure to the vacuum, that there is a fundamental structure to reality. You would expect that throughout the ages, we would have come up with it because it would be inherent in us. It would be oozing out of us. So I thought maybe they came up with this then. But I knew there was something wrong because a tetrahedron on its own is not in equilibrium. And I knew the vacuum geometry had to be in perfect equilibrium. So I had to find something else. Well, at the end of his essay, Hugh Holliston Jr. mentioned a very important thing, the isotropic vector metric from Buckminster Fuller. He said that the mathematical constant that he got from his surveying of that ancient city pointed out to the square root of 9 over 8, which is the mathematical constant for an isotropic vector metric generated by Buckminster Fuller. Bucky thought that this metric was the fundamental mathematical blueprint of the universe. Well, Bucky was quite eccentric. However, many of the things that Bucky came up with were later confirmed. So he's getting more and more um, acceptance of his work, although he's not around to appreciate it anymore. But the blueprint of the universe he taught was the isotropic vector metric. What is this thing? It's 10 tetrahedron on the bottom. This is called a three, a four frequency isotropic vector metric. So 10 uh, tetrahedrons on the bottom, three in the middle, uh, I'm sorry, six in the middle, three on, on top, and then one, making a huge tetrahedron on its own. Can everybody see this? So there's actually 20 tetrahedron in an isotropic vector metric. And if you take only one face of the isotropic vector metric, right, just, just a plane of it, then you have uh, four faces on the bottom, three faces on the second level, uh, two faces on the third level, and one face on top. Everybody sees this? Okay. Well, when I found the isotropic vector metric, I thought, well, I'm interested about negative space. So let me take off the tetrahedrons and see what's in between them. So I did that, and when I did that, I realized what was in between the tetrahedrons. They're octahedrons. Do I have a little octahedron somewhere? Oh, I know. I guess it got destroyed. The glue while I was traveling melted with this 108 degree heat we've been having. Um, so I lost some of my models. But uh, an octahedron is a pyramid with another one below it emphasis on the word pyramid. So I was happy to find that the, pyramid, the pyramidal geometry was present between the tetrahedrons. Can everybody see how an octahedron is two pyramids base to base? If this is one point of the pyramid, then the base is here, and it's a square base, it looks rectangular because it's in perspective, and the other point is here, right? Two pyramids base to base. There is a bunch of them together, but when I did this 
I realized there was something weird. There was something weird in the middle of the metric. Because the metric is called isotropic. So you would expect that it would be always um, in balance that it would always be in symmetry. But there was a symmetry in the middle. I found four reverse tetrahedron pointing down and rotated 180 degree. And they didn't belong to the octahedron and they didn't belong to the tetrahedrons that made up the outside or the metric. So there was a bunch of these, there was four